and happy slime to everybody, DK Guillotine here, and I know we are all very anxious to go see the reincarnated as a slime movie as it is coming out today, I'm so freaking excited, I'm gonna be going with my mother and a friend of mine from work, I'm just so freaking amped, I can't wait, but have to kill like another 7 hours before I get to go see it, and the anime awards are here, the 2023 anime awards hosted by Crunchyroll are here, I am really excited, I've, I've been really looking forward to actually getting to participate this year as I didn't get to participate last year because I was only like dipping my toe into being a weeb, now I'm a full on fucking super weeb, so I'm super excited to actually participate this year and hopefully get some of my favorite series of the year to win the awards that I feel that they deserve. Now, before we get into this though, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through each of the categories, telling you the nominees of each categories, and then telling you my personal vote and what I will be voting for every day of the votings that is going on right now. So you go online to Crunchyroll and you can vote every single day for each of, for which series that you want to win. If you want to vote for multiple series, if you're kind of rooting for multiple series, you can do it like every now and then, like vote for one one day, or you know, vote like give a couple of votes to one and then met, throw the main and throw the rest at you, the one you really want to win. So it's really, really cool. Um, do keep in mind that this is uh, Crunchyroll's anime awards, and they're kind of infamous for missing a lot of great stuff. Like, I know one that got snubbed this year was uh, Summertime Render, was one that a lot of people are really mad that did not get snubbed, that did not get any uh, nominees. I didn't get a chance to watch Summertime Render, I really wanted to, but it was stuck in the fucking Disney Plus gel, and I literally went to Disney Plus and I got Disney Plus so I could check it out and I couldn't find it. I, I, I think you have to be like, I think you have to get like a VPN and like connect it to Japan in order to watch that show. So unfortunately I didn't get to watch it Summertime Render, which I really, really wanted to, especially since ReZero was my favorite anime of all time and everybody was telling me it's very similar to ReZero. So yeah, but that's one that got snubbed that a lot of people are really pissed about. And yeah, Crunchyroll does miss some things. Although I actually think they did pretty good this year. They actually gave like, there were some, there were some Netflix animes in here. There were some high dive exclusive series in here. So yeah, I think they actually did a pretty good job with it. They, I mean, you gotta give them some credit here. Disney is Disney, man. They're fucking assholes. That fucking, Disney is the biggest, like, conglomerate ever. They're not gonna let them, like, do that shit. Oh, I fucking hate Disney. I can't put into words how much I hate fucking Disney, okay? I cannot. Um, not like, you know, like, Disney movies. I just hate the, the, the massive fucking fucking company that just buys everything and makes everything worse. They ruin everything, dude. Everything they touch, they fucking ruin. All right, I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself here. Um, this is gonna be a very, very long video. I think it's gonna be a more chill back, chill laid back video. I'm just gonna go through each of the categories, tell you the nominees, and then tell you my pick for the nominees. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to say in this. Oh, yeah, this is obviously just my opinion, so yeah, I take everything I say, you know, these are just my opinions. I didn't watch every single thing that is on here. There's quite a few of these that I did not get a chance to check out, but most of them I watched, um, but yeah, I feel pretty good about being able to do this. I feel like I'm missing one thing. Hang on, let me give me, give me one second to catch up with my mind and think and see if I'm missing something I, I wanted to say. No, I think I'm good. I think I don't think, I don't think I forgot anything. All right, let's jump into this. Which one do I want to start? I had to write all of these things out on individual pieces of paper, and this took fucking forever. So you people better be fucking grateful, because man, this took me like an hour to do. All right, who do we want to start with here? I'm not going to start with Anime of the Year. I'm going to save Anime of the Year all the way to the very end. Let's start with... Let's start off with best main character. So, the nominees for the best main characters of 2022 or 2023, I don't know how the fuck that works. Oh, I did, oh fuck, I did remember one thing I want to say. Okay, one more thing I want to say before we get into this, I'm sorry. I finally remembered, it was something really important, I knew I was forgetting something. Nothing from the 2022 anime season is eligible to be here. So, no Chainsaw Man, no Blue Lock, that's why those weren't here. No Chainsaw Man, no Blue Lock, no Bochi the Rock, all of those that came out um, in True Eternity Season 2, Mob Psycho Season 3, none of those are eligible to be on this list. That's why they haven't been nominated because they're not eligible to be on this. That's why that that's why that in this um, anime of the year, in this anime award thing, you have shows like Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer Season 2, which they came out at the tail end of, C of 2021. They were fall 2021 anime. That's why they're in this one. So it's going to be the same thing next year. So next year, you're going to see Chainsaw Man, uh, Bochi, The Rock, Blue Lock, all of those bangers. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm going to start with the best main character. Alrighty, best main character. We have Boji from Ranking of the Kings, Chisato Nishikigi from Like Horse Recoil, David from uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan the Final Season. 
We have Lloyd from Spy Family. We have Mani and Keith Tagawa from My Dress Up Darling. Alrighty, love all these characters except for David from um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Wasn't a fan of him. But my, my favorite of all of these characters is going to have to be Chisato Nishigigi. I am going to say my, my vote for the best main character of this awards is Chisato Nishikigi from Light Course Recall. I thought she was an absolutely extraordinary fucking character. I loved this character every single second she was on screen. She is such a happy, fun, bubbly character and just every single time she's on screen your eyes are glued to her and she is just so much fun especially when she's doing her fucking John Wick style action scenes with her guns and everything. She is just a way too awesome character and she is easily in my opinion the thing that made Like Horse Recoil the amazing show that it was. So my pick for best main character, my vote for best main character is Chisato Nishigigi. My runner up would be Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan, uh, definitely. All right, let's do best supporting character next. We have Ai Hayasaka from Kaguya-sama Love Romantic. We have Anya from Spy Family. We have Kage from Ranking of Kings. We have Rebecca from Cyberpunk Edgerunners. We have Tengen from Demon Slayer Season 2. And we have Yor from Spy Family. Now you all know what I'm gonna pick. You all know, come on. Obviously my favorite uh, supporting character, my vote for the best supporting character of 2023 is obviously going to be Anya from Spy Family. She is officially one of my favorite characters of all time. I love Anya so unbelievably much. This character is fucking incredible. One of my all-time favorite characters. She is a character that when she shows up, I just get happy and I just love the show. She is the reason why Spy Family is so fucking great for me. Yeah, there is no contest with this one. Anya is my favorite. Uh, I will say I really liked Rebecca from Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I did really, I loved Kage in Ranking of Kings. I don't like Ai Hayasaka. I do not understand why everybody loves Ai Hayasaka so much. I never understood what the, hype, the hype with that character. I thought she was just there. And I mean, she was kind of cool, but nowhere anywhere close to any of the other characters on this best supporting characters list. And even, and not even in my top five favorite Kaguya-sama characters. Really never understood the hype with that character. <laughs> And we have one more kind of interesting category that I don't know if was this was there, uh, if this has been there all, if this has always been there, but there was a must protect a character category, and in this category we have Boji, Kage, both from Ranking of Kings, Komi from Komi Saiyan Can't Communicate, Kotaro from this anime called, what the fuck was this thing called again? I've never even heard of this show, man. <laughs> Okay, so there's this Kotaro Lives Alone show. That's the show that this character is from. I never fucking heard of this show. I've not seen this show. I've never heard of this show until I saw it on this anime ranking. So I'm gonna have to put this one on my list because it got nominated for a fuck ton of awards and I literally have never heard of it. <laughs> But anyway, yes, Kotaro, and then the last one is Marin Kitagawa from My Dress of Darling. And again, yeah, this is so unfair. Anya, obviously, my favorite must-protect character. My vote for the best must-protect character of the year is Anya. There's absolutely no contest in this. Uh, Komi from Komi Senkai Communicate, I like a lot. I think she's a great character. Although, honestly, I know this is a hot take, but I actually think Sumi Sakawasawa from Rent a Girlfriend season, from Rent a Girlfriend is a superior version of that kind of character, the kind of shy, timid character who doesn't talk much. I actually I think Sumi is a far superior character than Komi. Komi is very cute, but after a while, I don't like Komi Sankan Communicate. I should probably point that out. I'm not a fan of that show. I watched um, up till episode 9 and I just lost all interest. I think the first episode of Komi Sankan Communicate is absolutely phenomenal, but as soon as they start getting into all the fucking weirdo characters in that school, you had the character that wanted to be her dog, and then you had the fucking Yandere chick. I do not like that show, so I'm sorry, but you're not going to see much love for Komi san can't communicate in this uh, video, so if you are, I apologize, but yeah, Komi, not, yeah, I, I, did, I do like her as a character, but not enough. Anya, who's my runner-up? I do want to give runner-ups, by the way, so I'm going to give my runner-up to Kage from Ranking of Kings. Kage's my favorite character from Ranking of Kings. I haven't finished Ranking of Kings, which we're going to talk about in this video. I've only watched core one of Ranking of Kings, but Kage is my favorite character from the show, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that some more right now because we're going to be going from must protect character into the best voice actor character. Now, I will only be doing my vote for the best dub voice actor because as you all know, I am a dub watcher and I rarely ever watch subbed anime. Sometimes I watch subbed anime, but I very rarely do and none of the ones that were nominated were ones that I watched subbed, at least more than multiple episodes of. Like Spy Family, I watched like two episodes subbed, but 
And I guess if I had to pick one, I would say Anya. Anya's sub voice actor was really, really good, but I loved her voice actor in the dub as well. And she actually didn't get nominated. Megan Chipman did not get nominated for Anya, which I thought was pretty, was pretty damn, yeah, not, <laughs> but they nominated uh, Natalie Van Sistine, who was your in Spy Family, and honestly, I don't agree with that. I think they should have given Megan Shipman the nomination over your, because honestly, yeah, Natalie Van Sistine is one of the nominees, and Honestly, I don't like yours voice actor in the dub. I actually think if I ever watch Spy Family subbed, I'm sure your will probably be a character I love so much more in the sub because I think I'll, I'll like her voice more. I don't know. She's not bad. It's a, it's not it's not like a bad dub. Like the Spy Family dub is great in my opinion. I think Lloyd is great. I think Anya is great. I think Fiona's fucking great. But your honestly, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about yours voice actor. She was she's fine. She's not bad, but yeah, I think uh, Anya deserved the nomination over her personally. And then the other ones, we have Amelie, voice, uh, who voiced Marin. She also voiced Ai Hayasaka, so Amelie. We have Zach Aguilar, who voiced David in uh, fucking Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Zeno Robinson, who voiced, uh, fucking, what's this guy's name? Gamma 2 from Dragon Ball Z. I don't, but, uh, yeah. Um, you all know, I've never watched Dragon Ball Z. I've only ever watched the fucking Dragon Ball Z Abridged uh, series by Team Four Star. That's the only thing I've ever watched of Dragon Ball Z. So, yeah, you know that one's not gonna be getting my vote. And then we have the one, okay, no, I'll save that one. Hara Harami Lee, who is Kotaro Sato. I told you, this fucking show got nominated for so many goddamn awards. Um, and then I'm just gonna spoil that this is my nom, this is my vote for this. Sung Won Chao, the boy, the goat, Pro ZD as Kage from Ranking of Kings. Honestly, Pro ZD is one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. I fucking love Pro Z. He is Pro ZD. He is someone who literally, like, he makes videos on shit that I literally don't give a shit about, like board games, and I watch them every time, and every single time they are just entertaining as fuck. Like, I love Pro ZD so much. If you don't love Pro ZD, what in the actual fuck is wrong with you? He's like one of those YouTubers that you just default love. And the fact that he voiced this character was just perfect. The second I started started Ranking of Kings and heard his voice as Kage, I was like, oh my god, this is my favorite character of the show, easily no questions asked. I love someone Shout to Death, he is by far my vote for the best VA of 2023 Anime Awards. Sungwon Chow as Kage, my vote. Alrighty, let's get into the genres. So we have the best romance, best fantasy, best drama, and best action series. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's start off with, I am not organized. Let's start off with the best romance series of the year. So we have Call of the Night, Kaguya-sama Ultra, or Ultra Romantic or Season 3, Komi-san Can't Communicate Season 2, Love After World Domination. I'm so happy that one got nominated because I loved that show. My Dress of Darling, and Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. Um, I, I really want to give this to Love After World Domination, but, oh, did I say, I believe I, I, if I didn't say it, My Dress of Darling, obviously. My Dress of Darling was my favorite anime of the year for about 75% of the year. I fucking adore My Dress of Darling. I can't wait to get the Madi Nendoroid, man. I love that show so much. It is still probably in my top 10 favorite anime of all time at the moment. I, I fucking love that show. So yeah, my favorite romance of the year, my vote for best romance is My Dress Up Darling. Although, Love After World Domination is absolutely my runner-up. I loved Love After World Domination. If you haven't watched Love After World Domination, that is a fucking banger and you should definitely watch it. I loved that show, man. So effing good. Loved it. Alright, so yes, best romance, My Dress Up Darling, but Love After World Domination was a very, very, very close runner-up. I loved that show. I will also say before I move on from this, that Shiki Moore's Not Just a Cutie does not deserve all the hate it got. That show was actually very, very good, okay? Uh, I, people talk shit on it when, it's still, when it ended because they were just like, people hyped it up. And then everybody was like, yeah, it was just kind of, it was, it was, it was just kind of generic and My Dresser Darling was so much better. And I'm like, yeah, My Dresser Darling was better, but that show was good. Shiki Moore's Not Just a Cutie was a well-written show with really good characters and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So the people who just talk shit on that show, that I did not agree with whatsoever. Shiki Moore's Not Just a Cutie was a good show and you should definitely watch it if you haven't already. Alrighty, let's move on to best fantasy. So... Demon Slayer Season 2, so we already know what's gonna fucking win, which is bullshit because we also have Mashoka Tensei in here, Mashoka Tensei Core 2, we have Overlord Season 4, Made in Abyss uh, Season 2, Ranking of Kings Core 2, and the case study of Vanitas Core 2. 
Oh man, we already know Demon Slayer is gonna fucking win this because it's fucking Demon Slayer. But I want Mashoku Tensei to win this, 100%. I know I'm not a big fan of Mashoku Tensei Core 2, and I know I've talked about that at length that I really loved Core 1 of Mashoku Tensei, but didn't care too much for Core 2. But I still want Mashoku Tensei to win this because Mashoku Tensei got done so, got done so dirty in the in the Anime Awards last year. Now I fully believe that Tensora and Reincarnation of Slime absolutely deserved the award that it got as the best fantasy of that. But I would have given the best animation to Mashoku Tensei. It deserved one of those fucking awards. And I really, I really hope Mashoka Tensei gets this one, because I think it deserves at least one anime award, but it's not going to. It's going to be fucking Demon Slayer. Unfortunately, it, it sucks. I really... D Demon Slayer? How is Demon Slayer even a fucking fantasy, dude? How is Demon Slayer considered a fantasy, but Attack on Titan isn't considered a fantasy? I have no idea how that works. Honestly, I think I think this is rigged as shit, because Demon Slayer is 100% going to win this, and there's, like, no contest whatsoever, but I want Mashoka Tensei to win this. And my runner-up is uh, Overlord Season 4. I loved Overlord Season 4. That shit slapped. Uh, made in a I haven't watched yet, unfortunately. I am that one's very high on my list. I will definitely watch that very soon. Um, and then Vanitas season two. I started Vanitas, I got to episode five, I think. I wasn't feeling it. Maybe one day I'll get back to it. I wasn't really feeling it. It was kind of meh, but yeah, maybe I'll get back to it someday. All right, so that is best fantasy. We all know Demon Slayer is gonna win, but I want Mashoka Tensei to win, and that's my vote. Best Roman, no, we already did best romance, I'm stupid. Best drama, where is best drama? I am not organized whatsoever, this is why you do these things. <laughs> All right, best drama. We have 86, Attack on Titan, the final season, part two, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Dance Dance Danseur, uh, Kotaro Lives Alone, and Made in Abyss. Those are our picks for drama. Um, yeah, Attack on Titan. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Nothing else even comes close. Attack on Titan, by far, best drama. No questions asked. That's my vote. Attack on Titan, final season part two. This one was stupid easy. Best comedy. We have Kagisama Ultra Romantic. We have Kotaru Lives Alone. My Dress of Darling, Spy Family, Uncle from Another World, and Ya Boy Kong Ming. Now, I have not watched Ya Boy Kong Ming or Uncle from Another World yet, or Kotaru Lives Alone once again. I haven't watched those three shows yet. Uncle from Another World, I've heard is really Really good. I'm planning on watching that eventually. And your boy Kong Me, I've had on my um, high dive uh, watch list for a very long time. I haven't watched it yet, but I definitely want to watch that one soon. But yeah, your boy Kong Ming, Uncle from Another World, and Kotaro Lives Alone. Unfortunately, I have not checked those out yet, so I can't give those my vote. But so we have left Kagusama, Spy Family, My Dress Up Darling. I mean, this should be pretty obvious. Spy Family, I fucking loved Spy Family. Spy Family was just an immaculate fucking series. I had no, I had no hype for that show whatsoever. It came out of nowhere. People started hyping it up and I checked it out and I fell in love with that fucking show. <laughs> Very sorry about that. I'm drinking a Dr. Pepper right now because it's fucking, mm. a long video. <laughs> Not sponsored by Dr. Pepper, just love it. All righty, but yeah, best drama, yeah, oh, the best comedy, Kaikisama, Spy Family, or My Dress of Darling. All three of those shows are bangers, but I'm gonna give it to Spy Family because Spy Family. All righty, best action. We have Attack on Titan, Edge Runners, uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Demon Slayer, Jojo Stone Ocean, Lyco, uh, Lyco, Lyco, Lyco Horse Recoil, and Spy Family. Okay, I'm not gonna give this to Spy Family because I think Spy Family is a much better comedy than it is an action series. Let's see here. So Attack on Titan, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Demon Slayer, Jojo. Demon Slayer was such a phenomenal fucking action series because the last six episodes of the Entertainment District Dark were just incredible. Jojo, I haven't watched Jojo. I have only, I've only seen the very first episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and I fucking hated it. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't want any Jojo fans to take that the wrong way. I hated it because he locked a dog in a furnace. That's why I hated it. Because I love dogs and when he locked the dog in the furnace, I actually like shuddered and was like, I, I like winced and was like, I can't watch this. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's the reason why I hated it. It was no other reason besides that. Maybe someday I will get back to, not maybe someday. One day I will definitely go back to Jojo and give it another try. And honestly, I've seen some clips from the Stone Ocean. I've seen some of the characters in Stone Ocean, and I think they look awesome. So eventually, I'm actually really, I'm really, really wanting to eventually check that out, definitely. But I have not yet, so I definitely, so obviously I can't give that my vote. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good saying Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer Entertainment District Arc, best action series of the year. Yeah, Demon Slayer Entertainment District Arc was absolutely incredible. Attack on Titan obviously is fucking phenomenal. The action is incredible, especially like towards the end. You know, yeah, the the Jaegerist thing that was insane as fuck. Um, and Edge Runner. It was barely an action series. No, there was, was a couple of scenes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give this to Demon Slayer. All righty, best comedy, best drama, best action. That is all done. Let's see here. Already did all that. That paper is donezo. All right, let's do best character design. So we have Cyberpunk Edge Runners, 
Demon Slayer, JoJo, My Dress of Darling, Ranking Kings, and Spy Family. Honestly, this is actually, I didn't actually feel, I didn't actually realize this, but I am gonna give one of my votes to Cyberpunk Edge Runners because best character design, I am gonna say Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, I'm gonna talk about this later on in the video, but I was not a big fan of Cyberpunk Edge Runners. But the, the character design was really great, okay? So I will give it that. The best, the best character design, my vote for character design is gonna go to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Lucy looks really cool. I like her hair, like her rainbow hair. Rebecca looked very cool. What was his name? Maine or something like that? I forget his name. I, for, I fucking forget his name. The big, the big muscly guy, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, that guy looked very cool. You know, it, yeah, it, it was a good show with character design. Trigger always nails it with the character design. But yeah, the, I didn't realize this, but I am gonna give one vote to Cyberpunk Edge Runners this year. So best character design, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Alrighty, do we want to jump into the best anime original? No, let's do best score next. So the best score, so this is the musical score, not the opening and ending. The best score, we'll get to that. Best score, we have Attack on Titan, Cyberpunk, Edge Runners, Demon Slayer, Men in Abyss, Spy Family, and your boy Kong Ming. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't pay attention to the musical score that often, except in rare cases like ReZero. Um, none of these I can really remember, like, the musical score. Attack on Titan had a pretty kick-ass score. I'll just say Attack on Titan. Uh, for, for the lack of having a better answer or better reasoning for any of these other shows, I'll say Attack on Titan, because, you know, fucking Attack on Titan. It's, it's always, it always deserves the award. Let's be real here. <laughs> Alrighty. Best, let's do, yeah, let's do best opening and ending next. Alright, so best opening. This is gonna be a fun one. You guys know how much I love my openings. Alright, we have Queendom from Ya Boy Kong Ming. Have not heard this opening. I heard it was an absolute banger, but I didn't want to spoiled it for when I eventually watched the show, so I haven't heard this one, I'm sorry. Um, we have Mixed Nuts from Spy Family, fuck yes, I love that opening. We have Naked Hero from Ranking of Kings Core 2. We have The Rumbling, oh fuck, this is bullshit, dude. The Rumbling, what? We have the This Fire from Edge Runners. okay. Hot take, I don't like that fucking opening at all. <laughs> um, and then we have, oh god, Zankyo Sanka Demon Slayer by Aimer. Dude, this is such bullshit. <laughs> Why is the rumbling here? This is so unfair. The rumbling is my favorite anime opening of all time. <laughs> this is so unfair. So obviously, yes, my vote is the rumbling, but this is such bullshit. Why is the rumbling even eligible? Didn't the rumbling win the fucking best opening last year? How the hell does that work? <laughs> okay, obviously, yes, the rumbling is my pick because the rumbling is my favorite anime opening of all time. That opening is god tier on a new level of god tier. That opening is flawless from start to finish and everything in between. But I, yeah, I wish I could have given it to fucking uh, Zankyo Sanka uh, by Aimer from Demon Slayer Entertainment Drift Shark because that opening just rules, you know. Da 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 da. Uh, yeah, that opening is incredible. That opening is fucking orgasmic. But uh, I can't, you can't beat the fucking rumbling, dude. What the? What do you want from me? <laughs> and Mixed Nuts also just slaps. I love Higgy Dandism, man. But yeah. This is a bullshit fucking category. I wish I could have given this to Zenki Osanka from Demon Slayer, but it's gotta go to the rumbling. It's there. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could, but the rumbling is my favorite anime opening of all time. Alrighty, best ending sequence now. Where is it? Best ending sequence now. Um, I'm not much of an ending watcher. I skip the ending about 75% of the time, but sometimes it catches my attention, and a few of these I was a big fan of. So, best ending. We have Akuma no Ko from Attack on Titan. Didn't watch it. Skipped it every single time. We have comedy from Spy Family, that's gonna be tough to beat. We have My Heart Has Surrendered from Kaguya-sama, eh. We have Koi no Yuki, the My Dresser Darling ending, you know, the doo doo doo. <laughs> we have uh, the ending to uh, Komi-san Can't Communicate Season 2, that obviously is not gonna win. Uh, Yafgash no Da from Call of the Night, okay, fuck. <laughs> It's definitely between comedy from Spy Family and Yafgash no Da from Call of the Night by, by Creepy Nuts. And I want to give it to both of them, but I'm going to have to say Yafgash no Da from Call of the Night by Creepy Nuts. That song is fucking incredible, dude. If you haven't watched Call of the Night, you haven't heard that fucking ending. Oh my god, it's actually orgasmic, dude. That ending is literally just, that ending is literally just paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of fucking rap. And it is just incredible, dude. I love that fucking song. I have listened to that song probably like 150 times, man. That song is so fucking good. So yeah, Yafgash no Da is going to have to be my win with comedy by Gen. Hoshino from Spy Family being a very run close runner up that opening is that ending is absolutely incredible Alrighty, that is best ending. Let's go ahead. I think yeah, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go with I'm gonna let my cat out real quick 
All right, so we did opening and ending. Now let's just do the best song. So there's a category that was just dedicated to the song in general. So we have Queen of Kong Me. Again, haven't, haven't heard it, sorry. Comedy from Spy Family. My Nonfiction from Kaguya-sama. That's going to be tough to beat. New Genesis from One Piece. Haven't heard it, sorry. Uh, Shall We Dance from Shadow's House. And the rumbling? What? <laughs> this is such bullshit. <laughs> Obviously my vote is the rumbling because it's here. This is my favorite anime opening of all time. This is such bullshit. Why the fuck is this here? Didn't it win last year? Am I forgetting that wrong? Was it my war that won last year? I mean deserved my war, but the rumbling? What? This is such bullshit. <laughs> I want to give this to my, to my nonfiction from Kaguya-sama. So bad, dude. You have no idea how much I want to give this to my nonfiction. That was an incredible ending. That literally was... That ending was incredible. But the rumbling? Fuck, dude. Cr Crunchy, we'll get your shit together. Why is this here? <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. I really wish I could give it to my nonfiction, man. I really do. That shit was incredible. And comedy from Spy Family, too. That's a really good one as well. Alrighty. So that is the best song. Let's do best director next. Alright. Best director. So we have... Haru Sotozaki, I am so sorry for butchering all your fucking names, I apologize, you did a phenomenal job, please don't let me take that away from you. Haru Sotozaki from Demon, who directed Demon Slayer Entertainment District Arc. Hiroyuki Imayashi, who directed Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Kazuhiro Furuhashi, from, uh, who directed Spy Family. Shingo Adachi, who directed Like Horse Recoil. Yosuke Hate, who directed Ranking of Kings. And Yuchiro Hayashi, uh, Hay Hayashi, who directed Attack on Titan. Okay. Directing. You know what? I'm going to give this to Like Horse Recoil. I think Like Horse Recoil was just phenomenally directed, especially like the last, like the, the third act of that show, the how it all wrapped up was absolutely incredible. Like everything, you know, you had like that, they were in that giant fucking tower and uh, Majima comes in, he had that whole like glass ceiling thing and she like falls in the glass ceiling and he throws a grenade on it and the whole thing just breaks and, and fucking Takina throws the rope down and she grabs it. Man, that was just phenomenally directed, man. That was incredible. So yeah, I'm going to say uh, Shingo Adachi, the Like Horse Recoil director. That's going to be my vote for that one. All right. I'm pretty sure I'm done with this paper completely. So we did best song, best film. Let's do best film. Actually, first let's do best continuing series, best new series, and then we'll do best film. So best continuing series. Uh, I tried to let you out, but you wouldn't let me. I'm going to try one more time. And then if I'm not, she's getting locked in here for until this video is over. I can't, dude. Every time I go and open the door, she just runs back. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to do uh, best continuing series. So we have Attack on Titan, <laughs> Demon Slayer, Kaguya-sama, JoJo, Made in Abyss, and One Piece. I haven't watched One Piece, so that is definitely something you need to keep in mind. I haven't watched One Piece yet. It's on my list, but yeah, one day. One day I'll watch it. Um, but how are you going to beat Attack on Titan, man? How are you going to fucking beat Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan is currently what I would consider the best anime of all time. Like, I have not watched an anime that I think is superior to Attack on Titan. So, it's got to be Attack on Titan. Yeah, this is so boring. <laughs> All right, best continuing series, Attack on Titan. Best new series, Call of the Night, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Like Horse Recoil, My Dress of Drawing, Spy Family, and your boy Kong Ming. Gonna have to go with Spy Family, 100%. Gonna have to go with Spy Family. Spy Family's the shit. I loved it to death. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Sorry. Best new series, Spy Family. All right, now we're gonna do best film, because I think that's a good way to, like, get into it. All right, best film. I haven't watched barely any of these, unfortunately, so... Hang on. I think I've literally only watched one of these. Yep, I've only watched one of these. <laughs> we have Bubble, Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, Inu Ho, Inu O, sorry, One Piece Red, and The Deer King. And... Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. So obviously I'm gonna have to give mine to Jujutsu Kaisen Zero because it's the only one of these I watched. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I really am. I'm sure One Piece Red will probably win this one because I heard that movie was absolutely phenomenal. My sister loved it. Um, but yeah, that one will probably win. And honestly, I am okay if that one wins because that one, like, uh, that one, what was that? That one beat Black Adam at the fucking award. So that felt good because Black Adam is dog shit. I don't even, have to, I don't have to fucking watch it to tell you that Black Adam is dog shit. So I'm so glad that One Piece fucking beat it at the box office. That made me so happy. So honestly, I'm gonna vote for JJK Zero, but if One Piece Red wins, no problems here. No problems. Woo! Good shit. Alrighty, so best OP, best film, yes. Okay, I think I'm good with this paper. Best VAW. Yep, oh, that one's good. Alright, uh, best character design. No, I already did best character design, sorry. Uh, best anime original. Oh, I didn't do best anime original yet. We'll do best anime original next, and then I believe we're on to anime of the year. No, best animation. So we're gonna do best character, we're gonna do best anime original, best animation, and then I believe we're on to best anime of the year. All right, let's do it. This cat, man, and this freaking cat. Come here, come here. <laughs> Tell them why you won't leave. Tell them why you won't leave. 
Why is it that every time I go and open the door, you just run back? Huh? Why is that? You know what? I'm going to carry you out the door this time. <laughs> oh, I should probably, you know, pause the recording, right? All right, where were we? Best anime original. So we have Birdie Wing, did not watch. Hero Curl, did not watch. <laughs> the Orbital Children, did not watch. <laughs> Vampire in the Garden, did not watch. And Yururi and Deco, did not watch. And Light Horse Recoil. Gee, I wonder what DK is going to pick. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to have to be Light Horse Recoil because I didn't watch any of the other shows. Sorry. <laughs> Definitely very, very sorry about that. Didn't get a chance to check out any of these other shows. I heard Birdie Wing was a very, very good show. I heard Healer Girl was also a very, very good show, but I did not get a chance to check them out. Uh, so, yeah, I have to give this to Light Horse Recoil by default, but honestly, I doubt any of these are better than Light Horse Recoil because that show slapped. All righty. Good shit. That paper is done. Continuing series, new series, best animation. Here we go. Best animation. All right. We have a KB Sailor uniform. Did not watch. We have Attack on Titan, <laughs> Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Demon Slayer, Ranking of Kings, and Spy Family. Okay. Spy Family is great as is. The animation, nothing special. Demon Slayer animation is incredible. Attack on Titan animation is incredible. It's fucking Mappa. Cyberpunk Edge Runners, the animation was gorgeous. Um, man, I think I'm actually going to give Cyberpunk Edge Runners a second vote here because the animation was absolutely incredible. So yeah, my award for best animation is going to go to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Wow, I gave Cyberpunk Edge Runners two awards, two more than I thought I was going to give it. Very cool. All right, best animation, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Uh, Demon Slayer, close second though. Demon Slayer, definitely close second. And obviously Attack on Titan, you know, when he, it's Mappa. <laughs> but yeah, going to have to give it to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Trigger always nails it, man. All right, is that it? Are we going to the anime of the year now? Are we going to the big kahuna? Let me make sure. We are, in fact, at the anime of the year. All right, we have Attack on Titan, the final season, part two. Demon Slayer, Entertainment District Dark, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Ranking of Kings Core 2, Spy Family, and Like Horse Recoil. Those are our anime of the year nominees. My vote is Spy Family. Now, before I get into this, I know Spy Family is not going to win this. I know Cyberpunk Edge Runners is going to win this. This is finally the time that I am going to say I was not a fan of Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't talk about this at all because I know everybody fucking loved it and I watched it and I just wasn't into it. I didn't finish it. I got to episode 7 and completely lost all interest in continuing the show. There is something to be said about how about Cyberpunk Edge Runners as a quality anime. It is a quality anime. It has very, very amazing animation. It has good storytelling. And it is... Yeah, it has those. But I hated every character in that show, with the exception of Rebecca. Rebecca was the only part of that show I liked. And I found that entire show, everything about the world they were in, the situations that they went through just miserable. The most depressing, miserable, hopeless thing I think I've ever seen in my life. Just every single character in that show had just the worst life I think I've ever seen ever. If I had to live in that society, I think I would have killed myself. It was just miserable to watch. I'm sorry. I know everybody loves Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I know it's going to win this award. I know it's going to be the anime of the year. I know it. Trust me. I know it. Unless somehow Attack on Titan wins this. I mean, yes, Attack on Titan is Attack on Titan, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be like, Attack on Titan has won way too many fucking awards. Let's give it to Cyberpunk Edge Runners because that's what everybody thought. But unfortunately, I am not, I am like the one person on this planet who did not like Cyberpunk Edge Runners. So I apologize to all of the millions of fans who love that show who are going to vote for it. Obviously, Spy Family's not going to win this, okay? It's not. It's my vote, but it's not going to win this. There's no chance in hell. Cyberpunk Edge Runners or Attack on Titan is absolutely going to win this. Maybe Demon Slayer, um, uh, Entertainment District Dark. Like Horse Recoil and Ranking of Kings, are, there's no chance. Spy Family I is is my vote, but I know that Cyberpunk Edge Runners is going to win. But like I said, I did not enjoy the show. And before I move on from this, I'm going to use the fact that I wasn't a fan of Cyberpunk Edge Runners to say one more thing before I leave this video. I am a person, I am a weeb, who is constantly accused of loving everything. I post videos and I just go on and on and on about how much I love things. I constantly call things masterpieces. I constantly say how much I love things. Here's the deal, people. The reason that you see that, that I only ever make videos and I only ever talk about shows that I love, 
is because I fucking hate talking negative. I hate making negative videos. I hate making negative reviews. I hate reviewing figures negatively. That fucking Lloyd SH figure arts, I didn't want to make a negative review on that figure. That figure just deserved a negative review. And I hate making negative reviews. So if I don't fucking... If I don't like a show, if I watch a show and I don't like it, I don't review it because I don't fucking like making negative content, and in my opinion, negative content is pointless. This world is already so full of negativity everywhere you go. This website, especially, is so full of negative garbage wherever you go. You can't go anywhere on this fucking website without someone speaking their mind and pissing off a whole crowd of people, and I can't stand it. Like, I can't stand how many people just talk shit on My Hair Academia all the time. I don't think My Hair Academia is a, a perfect or amazing or masterpiece show or anything like that, but it's a good show, and it doesn't deserve all the shit it gets. And I cannot stand people who do this. This is why I've completely... I don't watch anime YouTubers anymore. The only person I watch who is even adjacent to an anime YouTuber is Gwen Kalex, who just occasionally talks about anime when she's talking about her figures. I do not watch anime YouTubers. The Trash Taste Gang, I fucking hate all three of those guys. I don't care what anybody says. I think those guys are assholes. I do not watch anime YouTubers. I do not interact with the community because I just want to make my opinion of my... I just want to make my opinion of the shows that I like. If I like it, I like it. If I think it's a masterpiece, then I think it's a fucking masterpiece. If I don't like it, then I don't like it. And I don't need to listen to anybody else give their shitty opinion on that. My opinion is the only one that matters to me. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is DK Guillotine. A signing out and if you have the time maybe throw me all of your votes for the anime awards in the comment section down below I hope you guys enjoyed the video and this is DK Guillotine a signing out